Hi everyone um, and welcome to the August Bariatric Information Session. Um, as you can see, we've got Jodie here from Salford Royal, um, Bariatric Nurse, and we've also got Gillian here as well, um, who will be talking through her experience um, having bariatric surgery with through Salford Royal. Um, before we get started, um, as it's a webinar, you guys won't be able to see each other, we, we won't be able to hear you either. Um, Gillian will go through a um, presentation for us. And then afterwards, we're going to have time for some Q&A. So if you've got any questions to ask any of us on the panel, um, then please put them into the Q&A box and then use the chat box to chat amongst yourselves. But unfortunately, I won't be able to look through the chat box for your questions. So make sure they go in the Q&A. Brilliant. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, I'm really glad you can join us. So I'm Jodie. I'm the bariatric nurse at Salford. Um, for anyone who's joining for the first time, the idea is that we do these sessions on the first Wednesday of every month, except for the one in January. So you can get a bit of a feel for our team, um, for bariatric surgery itself. Um, and tonight is one of my favourite sessions. So it's a patient experience night. There will be some people in the audience um, as well that have had surgery. If that's the case, and you're happy to be one of our panellists this evening, which means you might contribute to the Q&A or I might have a little question or two for you um, then please do raise your hands and Abby's going to do her best to figure out how to flip you into the panel um, if not we might do it a different, slightly different way so let's see how the evening progresses we were meant to have two speakers tonight sharing their experience but one had to pull out unfortunately and they're a bit gutted because it is a really nice one to do because it kind of cements how far you've come. Um, we like the kind of warts and all. We know that bariatric surgery is not an easy fix. We know that you're all going through a lot right now with your weight management and um, delays and life and everything else. So um, bariatric surgery is fantastic. and But at the same time, it's, it's never that easy option. So it's really nice to hear from people that have actually had surgery. Um, so without further ado, we'll hand over to Jill, who's kindly said that she'll talk through her presentation. Be kind. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, so we're very grateful to have you. Uh, just one last thing from me. Abby, are you all right? Have you got the presentation and everything OK? Lovely. Right. I'll see you after. Thanks, Jill. OK. Right. Shall I start? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to run through this presentation as per the slides. I think there's 15 or 16 slides, but it does include photographs of me in various states. So be kind. Um, but Jodie asked me, I've been involved with the Salford weight team for a few years really now culminating in um, a sleeve gastrectomy last January 22 and she asked me if I would like to do a presentation for this evening which I was happy to do and share my patient experience with you all so here goes I am from Bolton so I have got a strong voice I think, accent so if there's anything unclear please just bob it in your, your questions and answers. All right, so my name's Jill, I'm currently 57, and this is my journey from sufferer to survivor and beyond. And yes, it has taken me 57 years to achieve this goal. So, you know, in all, never give up because it's never too late. Next, please. Right, so we start off like, because as a child, you know, because I think for a lot of some people, not some people come into sort of a weight loss situation later on in life. But I think a lot of people also start from um, being a young person, being a child and growing up. And that was my journey. Um, always feeling that I was the, the bigger one amongst my friends you know at primary school and whatever where you become aware of weight really um I mean we are talking about the 70s when I was sort of that age 60s to 70s so I'm sure now it's it's a lot more sort of involved really for kids now um especially with social media but 
I had a friend that was born on the same day as me, same age. We were actually born 20 minutes apart and our mums met in hospital. And during our growing up, um, she was always, we were exactly the same height. She was the slim one. And I was always the one that was a bit bigger, the big boned one, as they used to say. I carried on and it, I did start to become aware of this. And then, unfortunately, my dad passed and I'm an only child um, when I was 13. And that was extremely traumatic for me. And I think through teenage years, that consciousness about my weight um, just continued and grew. I was very self-conscious um, and had a poor body image. Um, which continued to affect my feelings of feeling a bit inferior, really, and my confidence was low. And normal ways of living were just like constantly thinking about food and, you know, what I should eat or not eat, dieting, checking weight, how to look and dress to try and look the best that I thought I could or that was acceptable to me. But, you know, growing up, people's glib comments, um, you know, that probably didn't, you know, mean any harm. But we're like, oh, the fat child or, you know, sit down, you'll break that chair if you sit on that. You know, they do hurt and they do stay with you. So in this picture um, of me holding our little doggy, um, I was 28, 29. I'd actually just lost a couple of stone i've been on a strict british heart foundation diet eating practically nothing for six months and managed to lose the the two stone so i was very proud and happy at getting down to sort of nine and a half but then i fell pregnant and really that's where i've had a lot of women's health problems from since during the pregnancy um and that then really made the weight explode and balloon um over the next 20 so years other issues such as you know i'm sure a lot of the ladies will appreciate you know with women's health there's a lot of hormone imbalance um pcos um i'd had surgery during the the pregnancy for dermite cysts a, you know two or three times so by the time I had my son um I'd gained from that starting point seven and a half stone which was just awful <laughs> um you know and in the clinic in the maternity clinic the doctor would make you feel absolutely dreadful by saying what are you eating are you eating cream cakes are you eating and you just felt totally mortified um next please abby i've been a nurse for 33 years now i've always worked in mental health i'm a trained mental health nurse um here's me <laughs> looking sort of very bloated i mean i always had a round face but I just look back at these pictures and just feel disgusted, really, um, with myself and how I look. Um, I was very embarrassed. You know, I tried every diet going, Weight Watchers, Slimming World, Atkins, the Heart Foundation I mentioned, but nothing gave me that start to proper weight loss. And, and a route to feeling happy um, for the long term. Next, please, Abby. So finally, I was, I think they'd started, and it was fairly a new thing, was the weight management service. And in Bolton, I managed to get my GP to refer me to the weight um, management team. Um, and I be began with that. Um, I mean, despite the weight gain through various conditions, um, 
I mean, I'd also had a couple of cancers in this last 10 years, which hadn't helped with the whole scenario, really. Um, I started going to the weight management team. But again, I just, I might lose, you know, a few pounds and I'd feel, you know, lifted about that. But then they'd just go back on and I'd just be swinging backwards and forwards all the time and just couldn't make any, you know, serious weight loss. Um, so eventually um, I was sent to the bariatric clinic in Salford in 2016 um but unfortunately at that time i just had the second bout of cancer and had had a total hysterectomy um and even though i i went and i saw the consultant and he did feel i was a candidate for the sleeve gastrectomy i couldn't go ahead right at that time so a delay came in again. I went back to the weight management team in Bolton. Then on a, another occasion, um, I got as far as the spire for my pre-op. Um, but because I'm on a, a medication for um, a particular endocrinological disorder, it just created a problem and again there was delay um it couldn't go ahead and then of course covid hit and we were all you know sort of pushed into our homes and nothing was going on with anything so again i was i was just stuck um to my own devices so this was how i always thought I might look I would like to look I never I've never been a, a slim gym skinny mini um but I've always felt like I didn't want to be a stick either or somebody who looked I always wanted to be just that you know sort of traditional woman shape um so this is this is for Fiona Wren and actually the year I was born 1965 um, saying she'd rather eat pasta than be a size zero. Um, so I, I kept this picture as a sort of bit of a benchmark, really. Um, so I then, next one, Abby, please. This is me. Don't be horrified with the picture on the right. Um, I'd managed to get, I think I'd gone under the radar a little bit post-COVID. Um, I kept ringing, managed to actually get again, sort of into the the books of all right, okay, perhaps we can look at this and try and get you in again, um, for surgery, consultation and surgery. So this is the end of twenty twenty one. Um, I'd finally spoke around November. Yes, I was still interested. Um, and then suddenly, really, without warning, got a call, um, December, late December, um, can you come in to Auckland's at Salford, um, and have the surgery? And I literally just had the two weeks available to complete the liver reducing diet that you need to do before you go in for surgery obviously to try and reduce the liver enough so that the surgeon can see what he's doing. So here's me on the left. Um, I'm trying to think how my eyebrows are so big <laughs> on this picture, but hey-ho. Um, and this is the 10th of January. I'd gone in and then following the surgery, I was up straight away, more or less. Um, you have these four or five wounds from the keyhole points but certainly by the next morning I was up and feeling fantastic um because when I'd had a lot of gynae surgery before I'd always been in bed in loads of pain um for days but this was totally different um 
So I thought, oh, this is great. You know, I'm I'm up, mobile, it's done. And now we just see, we see what happens. So the first thing they have to um, encourage you to do so that you can be discharged is have a small drink of tea. See if you can tolerate that. And they bring you a small bowl of clear soup. Um, and if you if you manage to tolerate those, then you know you find you can you can go home. So the first thing for me, really, probably because I was predisposed to reflux, um, was I could only manage a couple of spoonfuls of the soup because it just made me feel so sick um, and bloated. But I did come home and then you follow the plan um, what Jodie and the team advise in so much as three weeks of fluid only, clear fluid, um, tea, clear vegetable stock, um, nothing fizzy, you can have some juice, water, whatever you feel you can manage. I found it very difficult with water just pure water alone um well the main feelings for me were the heaviness in the stomach the real bloatedness and sickliness after a couple of weeks and the you know basically the wind the indigestion I had to I was like a baby I had to walk around and actually try and bring the wind up um after I'd had you know a couple of you know a bit of drink or something but by the time you finish the fluid stage um on week four you well I was you're desperate for something solid really um so then you start very slowly introducing you know, it's sort of semi-liquid, things like, you know, yoghurt with no no fruity lumps in it, just, you know, plain yoghurt, smooth yoghurt. I used to have a slim fast shake, um, fine soups, you know, as much, just small amounts, which is literally very small amounts. And then on to your, your soft diet um, after another three weeks of the... Um, the puree so yeah so you're eating a little bit more by and feeling a little bit you know better in so much as you're getting back to actually eating something solid but it's still well for me extremely small and I this heavy feeling was just something that you know I really had to try and tolerate and continue with because you know, I'm being totally honest, it wasn't pleasant. Um, but, you know, I carried on. Um, medications that you prescribe by the team, um, it's important that you take those, you keep up with the vitamins. Um, I am still on 80 milligrams of omeprazole a day. I use antacids and various things, but... I think it's, for me, I've never regretted having this surgery. And I think it's a small price, really, um, to feel more confident, look and feel healthier, and just be able to do things that you just couldn't entertain doing before. You know, going a walk, feeling you can keep more at a pace with your friend or your husband. I mean, straight away, I had the motivation to start going to the gym, um, which is something I'd, I'd never, I'd tried over the years a few times, but I always felt too conscious, too embarrassed. Um, but since that day in February last year, I go, you know, nobody bothers me. I just get on, I do my own thing, um, you know, bit of the cycle, bit of the treadmill, I still can't run on the treadmill, mine, but, you know, a bit of the, the weights and things. Um, I actually enjoy it because it's time out for you. So I say I've never regretted it at all. 
Um, and then, uh, is there another slide, Abby? Oh, yeah, here we are. Yeah, so this is me when I first started going to the, the gym on the left. The hair thing is because even though I had chemotherapy 10 years ago, um, and I've, obviously then I had to go through um, a rapid menopause, um, but if we look a bit further on, um, you'll see that I've I've tried to. So I think it's about reforming yourself in a way that you feel most comfortable, not how you think other people shall feel you look or how you should be, but what you do for you. And this surgery has enabled me to feel like I fit within society's norms. It's given me that confidence I need to feel good about myself and my body. Um, next one, Abby, please. Everybody's different and has different goals and it is very individual. As I say, it's what you need to feel you can move forward in your life without the physical and psychological burdens of being what I call a bigger person. There's no blueprint apart from following the, the program. Um, be patient with yourself, but it's your journey um, and you follow it as you your body adjusts. Um, is there, is there, are we nearly done, Abby? All right, here we are. Here's me. Um, having because of the hair, um, reform myself a little bit through other methods. But again, that added a lot to me to have my hair back alongside the weight, the weight loss. Um, so I've lost probably near five stones now. You know, I would like to still lose another two. Um, so that would be a total of seven. But, you know, I'm not pressuring. If I don't get there, you know, I'm happy with how I am. And over the period, you know, it, it's been a very steady weight loss. It's not been, oh, I've lost three stone in two weeks. So it's something you have to work at, keep committed to. For yourself you know to put that investment in take responsibility for yourself um you know there's been weeks when i've just plateaued and been the same weight for what seems like forever but don't get disheartened just keep at it and you will get there um you know the surgery is the start you know so make make your life and the goal what you want it to be um stay focused i can't see that last bit <laughs> what if i put at the end um it says stay focused um and make small changes to your lifestyle where you can yeah that's it and you know i always thought at the beginning um surgery was the very very last option for me because I suppose I was hard on myself always thinking, you know, I should be able to do this myself. Why can't I do this myself? You know, I'm an independent person. I'm a, I'm a nurse. I, you know, I see to other people. Why can't I do this for myself? But I had to really swallow that and say, well, no, I can't do it um and if surgery gives me that platform to enable me to do it then then that's what what I will do and I feel so thankful that I've had this opportunity um so you know if you have that opportunity then you know I'm, I've tried to be realistic you know it's you know it can be very hard um but it is worth it. So just keep on and you'll get there. So there we are. This is me the other week, last week at work. Um, because I also know, and obviously being a mental health nurse, I'm big on this as well as the physical side, 
that a lot of the time, yes, it's the physical appearance, but it's also, I think, it's the psychological burden that we carry, the thinking, how we've thought for years, how others have maybe, you know, made us think, the patterns of behaviour that we've acquired and breaking those is really difficult. You know, and I've experienced anxiety, I felt depressed, you know, negative about yourself and all because you feel bigger than somebody else and you shouldn't have to feel like that. So tackle the physical side, but also tackle what's up up here as well in your head and your mind and the two go together. So... Is that it then? Yeah, that's the end. I'll just say that. Use Jodie, Chris, everybody. Um, they're there to help and support you with whatever. They're lovely. Um, so, and they're just there to help. So use them. Don't don't be shy. Um, you're never a failure. Never be, never think that. You're never a failure. Just be your own success story. Thanks very much, guys, for listening. Thank you. Oh, Jill, that was just fantastic. Oh. <laughs> I feel really emotional. I just think that was just so, I don't know, I think everyone who's watching it will be so grateful because it really brings it home and how everybody's journey is so... I know, I'm near to myself, I know, and I, and I do <laughs> think this is a bit of therapy in itself when you look at just how far you've come and, you know, the goals you've reached and kind of just acknowledging lots of things that come with weight, especially the mental health side. And I think that's really important. Um, and I think we do see a lot of people now that, having additional hardships because we've gone through covid and we kind of almost forgotten about it which we of course we haven't it's left a bit of a scar but a scar we're not really willing to look at yet um and and that i think for people that were suffering with obesity or had a lung condition or severe asthma um lots of issues that uh, were right up there when we were watching the news saying oh it's worse for you if you're obese it's worse for you if you've got this it was a very scary time and people were in limbo yet again unable to access weight management unable to have their surgery so that kind of stop start has been really difficult and then the following impact of that of the long delays now so that getting that phone call where they're like oh can you have your surgery in two weeks is exactly how it still is now so people might be waiting quite a while um, and then they'll get that phone call to say right we've got we've got slots in two weeks three weeks but it is you know it can feel quite overwhelming because you've been waiting and then thinking mm. oh well I'll just stick a pin in that and it almost I wouldn't say it goes out of your head but for your own kind of sanity you can't be forever wondering when's it going to happen when's it going to happen you've got to live your life you've got to and I always say book your holidays do your life it will happen the funding's there it's just taking a lot longer so yeah so when you suddenly hear oh your surgery's in two weeks that can be quite overwhelming as well I don't know if you found that well it was definitely I mean I, I was yeah I, as I say I didn't have time to even think you know all the things I'd tossed back and forth previously I didn't have time to even think so it was just right I'm in and that was it but you know one of the, I forgot to say one of the main things for me as well was I know we always talk about weight loss but it was very much for me I thought what else can I do to create myself into a he healthier human being because I'd had the two lots of cancer and other issues and that was the only thing I could do was lose weight so yeah. it was about creating that healthier me yeah. to try and avoid avoid that so yeah and I think I think the other thing there was one of your slides was a picture of you with a nurse and you were saying oh I've always had a round face and then you were like oh I don't really like this picture and I can't remember what your exact phrase was but it's like I'm looking looking awful or looking disgusting I was disgusting I still have when I look back at them honestly I look at honestly and I couldn't help myself I was like looking beautiful because I genuinely not just saying that you were you look great you do at work you do your job I think sometimes um 
that imprint that 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 kind of self I can't take that away from you you feel how you feel and I think when people carry weight and and you need to carry weight to understand it fully like the people that are listening right now um but I just find that hard I find it hard when I see someone else struggle in that sense and they look at themselves and they kind of have that kind of form of self-loathing and that's a really difficult thing to acknowledge because you are hope you you know you're a wonderful person just the way you've taught everything you've said we can see you're a beautiful person and you're a beautiful person then and you're a beautiful person now um, and I think sometimes when we have bariatric surgery as well, it can make big impacts in um, little things like how you feel um, in terms of being able to do more, like keeping up with your husband, keeping pace. I like that phrase, keeping pace with the person you're next to. I think that was a really nice way to put things. Um, so, yeah, so I think that that kind of made me feel quite emotional when you said that, because I think for some people, they can actually struggle with their body image after surgery that kind of ident almost like an identity they weren't expecting to have or the head catching up with their body not really seeing it I've had people who are really disappointed who've lost 75 percent of their excess weight because they felt that they were going to look a certain way or they might have had an image and and still felt like they somehow failed because they have they're, they're not living that image or they may have not quite understood just or not understood or not quite uh, thought about the impact of other things like maybe some excess skin or the fact that you know whatever diet you're on the bit you want to lose your weight from the most <laughs> tends to be the last place it goes from so sometimes your expectation is like come on I just want that you know whatever bit of your body you've always had a bit of an issue with so there's there's things like that, that it's that how you kind of approach that journey as well again for your mental health is really important maybe i just mention where you mentioned about excess skin jordi because i'd had a lot of gyne surgery and full abdominal cut even sort of prior to the actual weight loss surgery and the weight gain but i always had like a bit of an apron tummy at the bottom um because I think I just lost the muscle because of the surgery. Now, that's the one thing that even though I've lost in other areas, that hasn't changed, which is, that's the, that's dis, I mean, I don't let it get me down. I'm going to think I look at, but that is disappointing in a, in a way to me. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm at the gym and I'm thinking, how do I get rid of this thing or re, reshape it so you know for the future I don't know but if you expect your whole shape to be suddenly you know it, it is a work in progress and it is but yeah. if you have that then it maybe isn't going to change a lot you know even with the weight loss so I know there's lots of Q&A, um, so we'll come to that in a moment with Abby, but I know we've got Jeff and Stuart here as well, who both also had surgery. They've just flipped into the panel. So thanks, gents, for joining us. Um, so just just briefly, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind asking you both, um, if we go maybe to Jeff first, what's kind of your been your the best thing about having your surgery and perhaps the hardest thing about having your surgery? The best part for me has been the change in, in being able to go out and buy clothes at a normal shop. Like I've been able to go go into any shop and, and just pick some off the shelf instead of having to buy off like fat man sites, as I call them, like Giacomo or whatever. Um, losing like eight inches around my waist. It's been four months since my surgery. Um, I had the single anastomosis, but it it's just been absolutely amazing that side of it. However, like Gillian has just been saying, People who come into it and think, like I probably did, I'm going to lose all this weight and I'm going to look ripped and I'm going to look really good. You've still got that. It's that that part of your body where you really want it to go from your belly. You really want it to go, but it's come from everywhere else. So I've got a little pea head now, whereas I used to have a big chock off <laughs> head and, and kind of like I've still got my belly there. But but it is amazing. I went out and I wore a suit on Saturday night for my brother's 50th and everybody come up to me and was like, oh, my God, who's this new person? And that just gives you a bit of a, a bit of a boost, doesn't it? And makes you feel better. But what I will say is that everybody's saying, like, I've lost six and a half stone in the four months, which I think has really been wow. amazing. What? However, um, for to do that, 
I have exercised my backside off. Like from the moment I could get out and walk, I've got out and walked and there's not a day goes by where my wife doesn't drag me out of the front door and drags me on either a four mile walk or an eight mile walk. And we've gone up to like 13 mile walks, but that I feel contributes, but I feel mentally better being able to do that. And it is, it's just an absolutely amazing transformation in such a short period of time. If you want to put the effort in, if you don't want to put the effort in, please don't go into it thinking it's the easy option because the other sides of it are like bits of dumping syndrome, um, you know, like constipation. I'm quite open on the ABL group. If people have watched, I'll put honest opinions of the fact that, you know, it's taken me three days to go to the toilet and I'm in agony. Um, you know, um, like Laxedo is my best friend at the minute. But, <laughs> but you've just got to crack on with it and, and take the rough with the smooth. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Um, and I'm sure we'll see you in future talks. So that'd be really nice to do your journey at some point. So yeah, thanks so much. No and Stuart, same question to you. Sorry, I missed the question because it actually Sorry. cut out. Yeah, I was saying, so my question was just, just briefly, what would you say is kind of the best thing about having had surgery and perhaps the hardest thing about having surgery? Oh, we've frozen for a minute. We'll give you a minute to come back to us. And I guess just, you know, when you're listening to people where they kind of say, um, oh, I'm doing lots and lots of exercise. That is brilliant. That is so good for your heart. It's so good for your mental health. And you'll sometimes find that um, this will help um, further down the road with things like excess skin. You can't exercise away excess skin. It won't ever fully go. So just again, have that kind of realistic expectation with it. Some of us are very lucky and have amazing collagen and elastin in our DNA. And that might make it a little bit easier for some than compared to others. So it's all again, a very individual journey. So even though social media has exploded and we can follow Follow people's journeys and so on and um, just keep remembering they're all individuals we're all very different on this planet and yeah all... mine mine has definitely definitely not disappeared <laughs> it's still yeah, and, uh, and still to be honest difference. that rapid weight loss which is usually the four to six months is almost when you kind of really notice it quite pronounced because your body can't catch up with itself so then kind of when you get kind of to two years plus it's slightly different um it can you can actually kind of gobble up a little bit of it and then and, and then you'll know kind of what you're left with so when you plateau out from that sort of two to three years so i'll let i'll let Stuart come back in because he's unfrozen now um and you're a fair few years down the line now aren't you Oh no, you're frozen again. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> with your connection. Oh dear. All right, let's go to some Q and A's, Abby. Yeah. Um. So just well, thank you everyone. Just before we start the Q and A's, thank you everyone for, um, especially Gillian for sharing that your journey. Um, I can see in the chat that a lot of people have found that really valuable. Um. Sharing yeah, your journey, I, love also, room. I loved all the emojis coming yeah up. yeah really but also showing you. like your emotional journey as well through it um I'm back. is that better <laughs> oh, he's in. i'm in i'm back in Good. the room <laughs> right well um so going back to the question the best thing that ever happened to me was questions and answers so when you get questions after what have you done and and how, how good you look and how amazing you look, that is just the best thing in the world. The, the, the worst things really were the dumping syndrome, which, um, I mean, you do overcome it eventually. Uh, I've got to that point where I've overcome it. Um, and you, 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 even now, I'm four, four years and three months in. Wow. Uh, and I'm still happy as Larry, fit as a fiddle and, and loving life. And and before that, I was depressed, um, frightened for what was going to happen to me because I felt like I weren't going to. I I really so up to the point of surgery, I felt like I weren't, I didn't have long left. Four and a half years down the line, now, of course I'm. Um, now I'm riding my bike, doing twenty and thirty mile a day, um, whether it be on my bike or in the bike in the shed. Fitness is absolutely superb. And life is just fantastic. I mean, 
he will go through the turmoil and 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 the stress and 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 the worry and and everything else through the operation. I mean, like you said, Jill, the, the worst things in my life was that three weeks, that three weeks of liquid. <laughs> I, I, I can't tell you how much that was awful. And then going on to the puree, don't tell you what not to do. Don't puree sausage and beans. <laughs> uh, I tried that. <laughs> oh, <it's not> <laughs> yeah, I'll not tell you what it's like, but don't do it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, life's fantastic now. And 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 you know, this team that we've got at South Royal is just absolutely superb. What can we say? Um, I think all of us can agree that they're, they're just cracking people. Love them, love them to bits and and, and look at where I am. Oh, well, right back at you. <laughs> right, Abby, let's have some QA. Yeah. <laughs> um so just before I start the Q&A, just to, um, I've put in the chat already, but I'll just put it in again, um, the link to our feedback survey. Just I know sometimes when I mention it at the end, um, some people are already logging off. So just would greatly appreciate if you spent a few minutes giving us some um, feedback. It's just a short survey, just to make sure that we're giving you the information that you need and the information that you find valuable. Um, so I'll pop that in now. So questions. Um, how is it decided what surgery is best for you as an individual? Um, I don't mind taking this one. Um, yeah. When you come and meet the team at Salford, you'll meet the surgeon. Um, most people also meet our medic. We'll give you the benefit of our expertise based on your individual history. So for some people, if they're, um, say, very, very obese, it may be quite hard to do a raw and wide bypass um, so we might even plan you for a two stage surgery where we would do the sleeve, see how you go with your weight loss and then consider a bypass if needed. Um, for other people, it may be that you suffer with terrible gourd, Barrett's esophagus or reflux. So you're having to take lots of um, PPIs, that's a meprosol, um, esomeprosol, lansoprasol, things like that on a daily basis. Um, so we may say the sleeve could cause you problems because sometimes the sleeve can have higher pressures and can sometimes cause more problems with reflux, which I think Jill's um, definitely experienced with her yeah. journey. Um, so we, we kind of try and mitigate complications and give you the benefit of our expertise. Um, and then, and, and then uh, really, it's more down to you. For some people, when they research this, they'll say, well, the sleeve seems to be the one with uh, that's the shortest time on the table, technically the most easy and seems like a lesser operation. It's still a major operation, just like a bypass. But for some people, are much more comfortable about the idea of a sleeve. Um, so we will always question with you, why a sleeve? Why a bypass? Um, and then if everybody's like kind of happy and we um, and if there are any additional risks, the surgeons explain them to you. Um, we won't do a surgery if we think it puts you in unnecessary risk. Um, and if you are a smoker, we would say, please be a lifelong non-smoker. Um, and we definitely wouldn't do a by bypass in someone who was a smoker who wasn't too sure if they would be able to be a lifelong non-smoker. And there's reasons for that. So definitely consider if you are a smoker now, how are you going to stop to give you all the good options and be as safe and as healthy as possible after surgery with this? Great. Thank you, Jodie. Um... And I'll ask um, each of you guys that have had um, the surgery, how long did each of you stay in hospital for and what was the recovery time like for you with going back to normal day-to-day -day life? Um, oh, start with you, I... Gillian. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> then I yeah. was in overnight. <laughs> I had the sleeve. So the reason why I didn't have the bypass was because I've had, IBS for years and years so you know that wasn't the right option but yeah I had the sleeve so as I say I was I was leaving after that couple of spoons of clear soup um you know the following day and I went home in a taxi I remember that I'd gone in a taxi and went home in a taxi so but um I was back at work in after a week so I was obviously a little bit anxious about how I was going to manage this all fluid thing and still do a however and how, how many hour shift at the hospital. But you do, you do. 
long as you know what's you know what's in your mind and what you have to stick with that um then you just get on really if you want it badly enough you you do it and you get on with it thank you Gillian what about yourself Jeff yeah I went in I was um admitted in the morning had surgery I was in for nearly three hours uh, I had the like I say, single anastomosis, but I was there overnight and I went home three o'clock the next day after making sure I could have the clear soup, which I really liked. And, oh, and I managed to, st I really managed to stomach it. Oh. And um, I had so much peppermint, what is it? Peppermint syrup that it was coming out of my ears because um, I thought it was like a soft drink. It was really nice. And then I went home and it, probably five days to, to rid myself of of the pain because I was in quite a lot of gas pain where they blow oh, you right. up like you was talking about Jill yeah. and it it was just horrific like yeah. really really bad pain but yeah five days on I was back to normal really thank you what about yourself Stuart so um <clears throat> I went in around about um 10 o'clock my operation was about two I had to stay in overnight because I had to go because I was on the CPAP before I um, so I had to stay in overnight on in, in the intensive care bit, um, just so they monitored me over, over the night. Um, I then went on roughly about 12 o'clock the next day. Um, unlike you, Jeff, <laughs> I was actually thinking when I had that, that, that liquid soup, I thought, is this what I've got for three weeks? <laughs> oh, my good God. Um, I think the best thing I had was... When they woke me up in the morning, well, I didn't really sleep. It's so uncomfortable, and you've got all this bleeping going on. Um, for some reason, um, I suffer from um, my, my heart rate goes really low. That's just something we've got. I think it's trachycardia, bachycardia, one of them. Um, we, we suffer that in the family. Um, but it kept bleeping the machine, and it kept running over. So not only did that wake me up, I woke myself up. Um, but the best thing I had was a yoghurt. Um, the next day and uh, it was so good there were no bits in it but it was still yogurt and it was something tasty um, and a brew but with that soup <laughs> but I did find there's, um, there is a, a company on, online and they do bone broth um, in oh. Coombe Valley so what I did is that I bought a load of bone broth and it actually made my um, my liquid meals a little bit better it gave a bit of flavour, um, and I got through the three weeks with that. Mm. It's just that sausage and beans. Just, just don't do it. 